Welcome back. So just like talking about languages and frameworks, there's a lot of IDEs to pick from. Um, and I'm going to pick WebStorm, right? Because I just like working with WebStorm. I'm pretty fond of all JetBrains products, actually. I'm also using Writer now for writing C-sharp code. This is not a commercial or anything like that. I just like to work with that tool and that's kind of why I'm doing it. Now you can use Visual Studio Code, that's for free. Uh, this guy has a student license so you can get it for free while you're a student. Uh, Angular IDE, I could see there was a price on that one. It's a pretty new guy, but you can go and check it out. I tried brackets, I just don't feel they were there. I just don't feel they had enough. Supreme Text, I know a lot of people who love that. Atom Editor, same problem. I think they weren't quite done when I used it the last time. It might have changed now. But I kind of I'm not that fond of that guy. You can actually also use just a good old Visual Studio to write your code, and therefore is that if that is what you want. The reason I don't do that is I feel it's pretty a pretty heavy IDE to to write Angular code. So that's why I picked WebStorm. I'm going to show you some pretty cool features in there. They've made a good integration with Angular actually, and they I just think it's a great IDE to work with in my mind. But you can pick all of these. There's none of them again are wrong. It's just a choice, and as you start getting used to the shortcut keys. Uh, I'm working on a Mac right now, but the same for the Windows. When you get used to the shortcut keys, you just don't want to change anymore. You're just kind of hooked into one IDE, and the better you add your shortcut keys, the faster you can develop. So you have to remember, stick with a good IDE and start getting to uh, use it a lot and getting used to it, and it'll really help you out writing some amazing code real quickly. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, let's jump into WebStorm right here. I just Googled it, and here's a download link. And there we go, we have WebStorm. I want to pick it for Mac because that's what I'm working on. Of course, there's also a Windows version and a Linux version if you want to use that. Downloading it and get zoom, it jumps down and then we pretty much just need to start this up and start installing it. So after you've downloaded WebStorm, I'm just going to try and show the installation right here on a Windows machine. It's pretty much the same questions on the Mac. I go into this installation um, wizard right here and then I pick what kind of launcher you want on the desktop, I'll just do 64 because that's my Windows machine. And then you can create associations, pretty much the same. Whenever I click a JavaScript file, a CSS file, an HTML file, I want it to open inside WebStorm. I'm going to do that. I don't need to download the JRE, so I'll just skip that one. I'll do it next right here, and then I'm just putting this in the startup folder. That's all you have to do. Now it's going to install. So I'll get back right back to you and just launch this application in a second. So I just jumped into the Mac just to show you when you're starting the first time it should look something like this where you can create a new project right here and that's what I'm going to do and let's just call it uh, I'm going to put mine inside documents work I'm going to put it into angular and I'm going to call the project cost app something like that angular just to kind of know that this is the angular problem uh, project so let's just call it that and there we go now I'll create this and it'll just be a blank project for now we'll start building this in the next couple of lessons on the Windows machine I'll just select run WebStorm and I'll do exactly the same thing just to show you. It's that symbol to get started right here. And that's actually all we kind of have to do. Now I'm not going to import any settings because just want to show the blank solution right here. Pops like this asking the theme. That's actually up to you. Now for video recording, I normally stay with this one to get it, keep it light. But for working, I'm actually more fun of doing the Dracula theme. So I'll just pick that now just to show you. And you can select some specific things to uh, import that's extra. I'm not going to take any of them. I'm just going to start using uh, WebStorm right here. It pops up like this. It's already licensed to me, but you guys can actually go and search and ask, sorry, for a student license. And you can do that by just writing JetBrains. Of course, you need to be a student, right? Student license. And then you'll see how to actually uh, figure out how to use a student license. So here's the link, free for students. Go and read, apply now, and just follow the link. It's something about writing down the school you're at and just showing um, that you actually are participating right there. Now, I'm not going to pick any of these for now. You could actually start working with Angular CLI, React, uh, Node.js, blah, blah, blah. They have all the great tools in here that we want to work with, so they are available. Instead, I'm just going to create an empty project for now, and I'm actually just going to keep it empty for now. I'm not going to work on my Windows. I just want to show you guys how to set that up. So now we have an ID. Now we have an area where we're going to develop our actual project, right? Where our actual um, code for Angular is going to reside. And again, I picked the JetBrains IDE right here, WebStorm, because I, I'm just fond of it. You can pick any one out there. It's up to you. But that's it for this lesson. Next lesson, we'll start actually installing Angular. See you next time. Have fun.